This story begins with a single plastic bag. One bag that I got from my local grocery store to carry home a single container of peach yogurt. Once I got home, I shoved the bag in with all the other bags, next to another bag full of other bags, and I never really thought about it. Maybe I tried not to think about it. I mean, I'm an average guy. I'm not what you consider a tree hugger. I try to be informed, I try to do the right thing, but I find that it can all be a bit overwhelming at times. I mean, we all have a lot of bags, right? Everybody does the same thing. We collect them, we shove them anywhere they'll go, like under the sink, junk drawers. We throw a pile away every now and then just to be done with them, because they're disposable, right? They were created to be thrown away. But let's face it, there's a dirty little secret here, even if we won't admit it. Just because plastic is disposable doesn't mean it just goes away. After all, where is a way? There is no a way. It actually sticks around for a really long time. Back it. Plastic bags are made of polyethylene, which is a polymer made of ethylene monomers, which is made from, well, actually, what they're made from is a really good question. The United States uses, you know, roughly, uh, estimates are about 100 billion plastic bags per year. It takes about 12 million barrels of oil. In North America, because we have an abundant supply of natural gas, they're predominantly made out of natural gas. The key feedstock for making plastics is petroleum. In North America, we don't use oil. We use natural gas. Plastic bags are made of polyethylene. The building block is oil. So what is it? Petroleum or natural gas? The bottom line is they're made from fossil fuels, which are non-renewable resources. That means once they're gone, there isn't any more. Plastic bags as we know them appeared in grocery stores in 1977. And in this very short amount of time, we're up to consuming about a million a minute. It would be great to come up with the real cost of the plastic bag, because that is the number one consumer item in the world. Most municipalities don't accept plastic bags as part of their recycling program. If they don't want them, where do they go? Well, as a matter of fact, a lot of our plastic goes to Asia shiploads of our plastic garbage is going over there. And the reason it's going over there is it's yucky to reprocess it. It's technically impossible to really recycle it. It's dirty and stinky and gross, and we don't want that stuff here. What they do is they take it into a big yard and they pop it open and they have people working under very low wages with very bad working conditions, and they will cherry pick out the things that they can melt down and, and do something with. But the human rights and, and labor issues related with that and the toxicity issues of some of the open plastic melting that they do, to me, those do not fit in a recycling model. Oftentimes, the plastic industry will say, when you're making a choice between paper or plastic, plastic is the better choice environmentally. Um, plastic is very lightweight. It takes fewer fossil fuels to transport plastic. So what's left out of the equation, very conveniently, is what happens to our plastic when it winds up into the ocean. If that were quantified, and if that became part of the analysis, there would be no contest. Over 260 marine species are being impacted by plastic either through ingestion or entanglement. This 26-foot-long bride's whale was stranded on a beach in Australia and died. It was found that the whale's stomach was packed with over 19 square feet of plastic. In fact, it is estimated that plastic kills 100,000 marine animals each year. If you can envision what a plastic bag would look like floating in the ocean, it looks like a jellyfish and many sea turtle species eat jellyfish. When scientists are conducting necropsies, which are animal autopsies, they're finding that sea turtle stomachs are full of tiny little pieces of plastic. Some sea turtle species, like the Pacific leatherback, it's estimated that they could go extinct within the next couple of decades. We're really in a position where every dead sea turtle counts, and we need to do whatever we can to keep them alive and to recover healthy sea turtle populations. It's time for us all to really take a closer look at plastic. The way it doesn't go away, 
the way it pollutes, the way it flies and floats and drifts and clogs and entangles, the way it gets into things so big and so small, the way we can't escape it anymore, the way, eventually, we may not have any recourse. We'll all just simply have to stand up and say, bag it. <laughs> <laughs>